Frida Medrano, studied graphic design at Universidad de Monterrey in Mexico. Her journey in type design began with a school assignment that produced Calnia, her first typeface. When variable fonts emerged, in order to explore the technical part of the process, she designed Jabin, a variable font with two axes that control the weight and swash of the black letter. With this project, she participated in Tipografia Mexico 2017, a type design conference that analyzed the variable font format. She worked as a branding designer in, in Anagrama, making custom logo types, and with a web design background, her main goal is to combine technology with typography to explore different design perspectives for branding and web. She currently collaborates with TypeMade and works as a digital designer. Now, it is our great pleasure to introduce you to Frida Medrano, the recipient of the 2018 Soda Catalyst Award. Hi, uh, thank you for, for, the, for the award, for the association, and I'm going to share a little bit about what I've been doing and a little bit of the process too. So my introduction to type design began when I did my first typeface school assignment. I didn't know much then, but a teacher instructed me about calligraphy, lettering, sketching, and the basis of type design. And later on, my boss at my web design job at the time, Santiago Orozco, uh, taught me about uh, kerning, metrics, interpolation, and technical parts of the production process. So my three months assignment became my two year project and uh, I learned a lot, a lot about software and I met a lot of people uh, going to workshops and conferences like this uh, where I could uh, end up in this typeface. This is Kalnia. It's a display typeface. Uh, it has, well, it's inspired in the fat faces of the Victorian era. And it has four weights and a Latin one character set. This is more image from that. Uh, so while in college, uh, I did a concentration in information design, and it was mainly about icons, so I started doing them as icon fonts. Uh, these are some examples of them. So uh, to do the, the icons, I got based on the typography that I'm going to use, and just uh, take the color and the grid to kind of like have a, an overall consistent look. So at the end of this, I thought, great, I finally figured out like, the process of making a typeface, but then variable fonts came out. And I thought, OK, I have to learn again uh, the process. It's not that different, but at the time, there was not that many information online. Uh, so I started to do this typeface. Uh, it's called Javin, and it was, it was like a, a thing that I did to know how to make that process. It has two axes, uh, one for the weight and another one for the swash. And it uh, takes out the swash completely and then uh, put it again in the uppercase letters. Uh, I got inspired by George Shelley's work of black letters and the Gutenberg Bible. Um, this is my interpretation of that. What I wanted to, to have is that the lowercase letters to have a very kind of like a structural look, but the uppercase letters to have a more curved and ornamented uh, part, uh, way. So that's the swash uh, part. So I released it for free for, for personal use, so you can download it in my website and check it out if you want. Uh, so I learned about uh, programming and design, like to separate things, but variable fonts uh, 
help me to know about how can I uh, kind of like uh, combine these two, these two things. And because at the moment I was making logotypes for Anagrama, a design agency in Mexico about branding, uh, I start to make projects uh, to know how can variable fonts affect brands. So these are some main problems that I saw. Uh, first of all, uh, print and web are two separate environments, like you have to make first your design for prints and then redesign it for web. Uh, then the information can be seen, so if you update one file, you won't necessarily update in the other files. And you have multiple files because there are multiple extensions and you uh, end up having a big heavy folder of all of your files. And lastly, the, anima the animation is like separate from the files, so, uh, so you have to animate a double or even more sometimes. So I realized that variable fonts can help us to create a flexible and dynamic branding that can move effortlessly between print and web. Uh, it can be like a bridge between these two environments and right now there are a lot of uh, things about responsive types so that's something that we can use to have responsive logos on an animated brand. Uh, we can store like the data of a visual identity uh, with the advantage of the variable font format. Animation, responsiveness, multiple style and compression. So I did this branding with Code's help. Um, it's called the four wall. All of the um, all of the uh, the image that you see in here I made uh, as a font. And this is how the font works. Uh, I store the data that a brand needs to be a brand, like the logo, icons, and uh, pattern, in one uh, single file and in one single axis. So the logo goes from the extended and compressed version and the other things just have that smooth animation. And this is the web. Uh, uh, the kind of like the patterns are the icons uh, rearrange themselves when they go to the mobile uh, version and also the logo goes from the uh, extended to the compressed version. And one thing that I want to point out in here is that you uh, animated just once for the whole pa web page. So you have like two, three lines of codes for all of the animations in there. So when I start to read about type, uh, I heard that Josman Rossum said that fonts were like software. And Peter Bablockland talked about how code, we can use code to automate design. So those type of ideas help me kind of like to match uh, code with, with, uh, with type, and I realized that letters are like variables. This means that you can assign any value to any letter. For example, in my case, uh, I assign um, parts of the pattern to each number, and even the space matters, so some of the numbers up there doesn't have any graphic, but it has a specific metric. So everything is good in here, but to make an actual functional pattern, you need to store letter combinations, like uh, the combination of numbers to have um, the, the arrangement of the pattern. Uh, things like names, dates, uh, text are also letter combinations, and these are more variables. So to make this, uh, to store all of these values, uh, I did a database. And to be a little bit more graphical about this, this is a video. Um, I made a site using Flask. It's a framework in Python. And in there, um, you can just like uh, put all of your information. It's like a form. And like this is how you store information to the database. So you don't, know, you don't have to know programming or anything. You just need internet. And I assign like a pass, uh, password so you can log in and update or delete the information if you want. So you can have like the access to the information in there. Um, and I made a function. So every time uh, that a new user is, is, uh, it's, it's created, it creates a, like a random number, a big random number, and the, and the typography translates this 
number to a pattern. So the background that you see in there is a custom pattern for each user. And it's like uh, stored in that database. So for example, in this, in this home, it's a custom home web page for, for, the, for the user. And one of the uh, challenges that I said before is that there is no relation between print and web. Uh, so in here, I am, I am doing the, the print uh, versions in Python, like in, in Drawbot. This is a model of Drawbot. I take the interface completely, and it uh, creates a PDF with the, with, the, yeah, with the business cards, with the information that you just added. So it's there. And you can see that the pattern is like uh, custom for each user. And you can also open this in, in Drawbot if you need the interface. If you need to see like the actual image, you can open it in there. And that is the, the information that I just added in the other video. So it's sync. It's, and other thing is in, in this part is that you can actually take the PDF file and open it in, in Illustrator and edit from there. So the interface is there if you need it. But it's not like necessary. Like softwares are more like add-ons. This is because the interface sometimes are very heavy uh, because they are loading um, tools and presets and things like that. And sometimes you don't need them. So by taking only the things that you need, uh, the file is really compressed. This is part of the code. I don't want to kind of like get involved a lot of it in that part. But for example, you can see that I am calling the logo, the user pattern, and the position and names uh, as variables. And these are names that are shared between print and web. So uh, like this, uh, I'm creating a kind of like bridge between web and print. And I am using typeface to do that. And because for variable fonts, we use Python. In print, I am using Drawbot that uses Python. And Flask, that is a framework in Python. So like this, uh, everything is open source. I make sure that everything is open source so they can all communicate in the same language. And the database helped me to kind of like communicate the information and the graphic information. Like in this case, the information are like names, uh, address, cell phone, things like that. And the graphic information is like the pattern, like the numbers of the pattern, and logos. And the graphics are the actual vector graphics. Um, yeah, so everything is connected at the end. And in here, I'm showing how you can update the information, just like you did, like you just enter it. And you can actually create new content too, like an article. Uh, in here, I am just doing like uh, putting the fields that normally in editorial design you use, like title, abstract, content, and things like that. <laughs> and it creates an actual article in there. And it has all of the animations of the typeface that is the same as the home page, so it's the same code. I am not doing double code. And you can actually see this thing in print, in the print design too. Um, in this case, I'm just gonna show like a social media post. Uh, because this is great for that uh, specific format, because for social media, you need something like quick. Uh, so in this case, uh, it creates this, this post that is like a GIF, it's animated. Uh, there you can see it. And it's with the title that I just put in. So everything is connected. This is part of the code of that. Uh, what I just want to point out in here is that the numbers that you see in there is the pattern. Uh, the typeface is the one that translates that number to actual graphics. So the zeros that you see in there is just spaces. It's just gives the, the space and the numbers, it gives the actual graphic in there. So this is great because at the end you can edit a file three ways. Like in a third level, you don't need to know about design or programming. You can be, for example, a project manager and you can edit the information, delete information, so you are not depending on the design team. And this is great, for example, for large business that have a lot of staff and people 
So you don't have to create all of the business card manually or, or things like that, they create automatically. And in the second level, you can be a design expert and you can edit the file in Illustrator. And in that first level, you can be a programmer and edit the files in, in the code part. Well, this is a database that I've been <laughs> talking about. Uh, that is the part of the posts. So that is the information that I just added and the users are in there. Um, in here I also put like the company information, like the address, the logo, telephone, and things like that. And what I'm showing there is a custom pattern. So every time a new user goes in, it creates automatically and it's stored there. So every user is going to have that part. And these are the UFO files. Uh, yeah, I create two masters, one uh, at the beginning, like for the logo, to have like the compressed and extended version. And then to have the smooth animation in the, in the other element, like the icons, I needed to have at the end two extra masters uh, at the center of it to kind of like have that animation in the icons, but not in the logo. In the logo, I just want to have like the responsive logo. So at the end, uh, I am putting all of the assets in the typography. And it actually helps a lot uh, and to have everything connected between print and web file because at the end, all of the, uh, all of the things that I show, including the mock-ups at the beginning, the, the ones that has like uh, the tote bag and the boxes, everything of that is one megabyte in the folder. Uh, that in contrast of having the assets, that is how normally we do it, uh, the assets like in one part and the print and web and not connected is 18.5 megabytes. So it's a huge uh, part in, in compression. So in summary, uh, the benefits of this is that you just have to make one update and everything will synchronize. Uh, two is compression. Three is the interface is there if you need it, and that is also part of compression. Uh, in four, you have the global visual language, and this is thanks to the typeface too, uh, because all of the assets are in there. Uh, then the animation is in the typeface, so you don't have to animate it many times, so you just, you just do it at, at the beginning. And this is scalable. It means that you can keep adding icons or things like that to the typeface, and everything is going to upgrade uh, itself. Because fonts are actually very good at this because everything reads them. Every software, every application reads them. So it's really great in that part. And if you do, for example, a rebranding, you can just uninstall the font and install it again and everything is going to be uh, sync. So, I'm not, I'm not saying like that this is a way that we should go, but I want to uh, know how can we use variable fonts to create new solutions for different environments and how can we use them as a tool uh, to this. So yeah, uh, I just wanted to share uh, how I see type uh, as, as also a tool and the projects that I've been doing, like my typefaces, these type of projects, uh, Normally I do like uh, little projects and then like a big one uh, over there uh, for of that. And I am working right now as a web designer. I am also doing typeface for TypeMate and I help organize now Tipografia Mexico that is a congress uh, of type design. So thanks a lot. <laughs> thanks a lot for sharing. <laughs>